church if you came to bless God if you're thankful hallelujah to Jesus hallelujah we're gonna go back to old church uh, everybody join in and sing this with me this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made and I will rejoice I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Listen to this. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I got my war clothes on. Army of the Lord. Got my war clothes on. In the army. Got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on. In the army. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. In the army. I'm a sanctified soldier. In the I'm a soldier. This is this. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. I know too much about I know too much about him. I know too much about him. I know too much about him in my heart. Oh, I know too much about him. Know too much about him. Know too much about him in my heart. I know too much. Know too much about him. Know too much about him. Know too much about him in my heart. Oh, I know too much about him. Know too much about him. Know too much about him in my heart. 
Hallelujah. 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 How many people have come to praise him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. He has kept us. He has blessed us. We're still here. If nothing else, the fact that we're still here, clothed in our right mind, God has provided for us is enough to give him praise. And so sing this with me. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, everybody. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Bless his Savior. He's worthy to be praised. One more time, everybody, praise him. Sound like old church. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise him. Jesus, bless his Savior. Oh, he's worthy to be from the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun until the going down, until the going down of the same. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Come on and praise him. Everybody praise him. Praise him. Come on and praise him. Call his name Jesus. Bless his Savior. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. One more time from the rising, from the rising of the sun until until the going down of the same our god is worthy jesus is worthy he's worthy he's worthy to be praised come on say glory 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 in all things in all things give him glory give him glory Jesus Jesus blessed blessed Savior Oh, he's worthy to be. Can we say glory one more time? Come on, sing glory. Glory in all things. In all things. Give him, give him glory. 
Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, call his name Jesus, blessed Savior, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, our Savior, Jesus. Blessed Savior, our healer, Jesus. Blessed Savior, provider, Jesus. Blessed Savior, our Lord and King. Blessed Savior, somebody call. Name Jesus, blessed Savior. Oh, He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, come on, come on, lift up a praise in this house. Let us enter into his presence with our worship. Come on. Give him the fruit of your lips. If he's been good to you, don't get tired. Don't get tired. Hallelujah. Let him know he's welcome here. Let him know the spirit of God is welcome here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over this building, all over this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exalt the name of our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Blessed God, we thank you for your presence here in this house. And oh God, we don't take it for granted just because, because we gather that you're going to make visitation with us. And so at this time, we invite you to come in. Not only do we invite you to come in, by your spirit, we yield to whatever it is that is the will of God for this meeting. Lord, I God, I pray even now that we would feel your presence. We would sense your presence. That we would be transformed by your presence. Anoint the choir, oh God. Anoint the musicians. Bring Kelvin and Ashley safely, God. And, oh, God, I pray even now, oh, Lord, that you would just go through each pew, go through each seat, oh, God, touching, oh, Lord, each person that is in this place. Lord, there's some situations and some circumstances that we're facing, oh, God, and we don't know what to do. There's frustrations that we don't know how to handle. But, blessed God, now that we're in your presence, we can cast our cares on you because we know that you care for us. And that you are able to carry all of the burdens that we place on you. And so, God, free us up on this Independence Day. Free us up to worship you in spirit and in truth. Let us lay aside every weight, the sin that so easily besets us. And, oh, God, let us run this race to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In your hymn books, turn to hymn number 137 as we sing, There is Power in the Blood of Jesus. If you would stand, if you can stand, we will be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. And we're going to need a beat and some hands clapping uh, to keep, keep time. Why y'all start off? Would you be free from the burdens of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you all leave for a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. One working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, one working power. 
Would you be free from your passions and pride? Would you be free from your passions and pride? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing. Come for a cleansing. Calvary side. There is wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power. Would you do service for Jesus, your oh, king? Would you do service for Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood. Oh, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? Daily for praises to sing. There is wonderful power. Come on, put blood. your hands together. Power. 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 While you're still standing, usually we come to the altar, we gather together, and, and we clasp hands and hearts together for our altar prayer, but we're in a time of COVID, and so we're going to clasp hearts together, clasp spirits together as we go to our God in prayer. As I pray, I pray that you would pray as well, blessed Savior, mighty God. Your people come before you now gathered in this sacred place. First and foremost, just to say thank you. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you for your salvation and your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the indwelling power of your Holy Spirit that teaches us, leads us, and guides us into all truth. Lord God, thank you for all that you provide for us. Thank you for your keeping power. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for everything that you have given us access to because we're your children. Oh God, we haven't always gotten it right. We've fallen short. We've missed the mark. We have sinned. But oh God, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your cleansing. Thank you for your power that enables us to get it right and to do better next time. We confess even now, oh God, we ask that your forgiveness would be upon us and that your cleansing, God, would cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, cleanse our souls. Thus, God, we thank you for this Ebenezer Baptist Church the witness that you have given to us here on the corner of 3rd and 4th Street. But, oh, God, we know that there is more that you have for us to do. And so, oh, God, give us the Holy Ghost boldness to go forth and to be disciples for Jesus Christ. I pray even now, oh, God, that you would open up opportunity for us to share the gospel. Open up opportunity for us to be witnesses. Open up opportunity, oh God, for us to exhibit the love of Christ to this community that so desperately needs you. Now, oh God, be glorified in this worship experience. Yes, oh God, we've we, we've had some hiccups today, but you're still worthy. And, oh, God, we're not going to allow anything that the devil might try to, to steal you from getting your glory. 
be glorified in everything that we do. Be glorified in this worship, in the fellowship, and in the word. God, you are a wonderful God. You are a magnificent God. You are gracious. You are merciful. We don't deserve a relationship with you, but you give it to us anyway. And we are so grateful. That your will be done in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Okay. Um, at this time, we are going to ask Reverend Alva Fogel to come and to welcome any visitors that we may have. If you're here visiting us, for the first, the second, or the third time, or the hundredth time, uh, we're just going to ask you to stand so that we can acknowledge you. We thank God for each and every one of you. We know that um, my friend, my brother, Pastor Gregory Jackson, is here, and we thank God for him being in, in the house with us. We know that he is retired, and so he could be on a beach somewhere on the French Riviera, but he decided to come and stop by uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church and, uh, and worship with us. And so we're good and so blessed to see him. Um, Reverend Folk will come and welcome our visitors. Good morning, everyone. God bless you all. First, our mission statement is we are disciples equipped to bring ministry to the max. And we just thank God for each and every one of you. Will visitors please stand, all visitors? Amen, amen. Well, we welcome you today and we just thank God for you. Thank you for choosing the Ebenezer Baptist Church. On behalf of our pastor, Preston Earl Thompson Jr., we welcome you in the name of our, our Father and our Son and, our, and the Holy Spirit. And we're glad this morning for both of you coming. You could have been anywhere else, but we thank God that you're here with us. God bless you. And to Reverend Jackson, thank you. Thank you for your presence. And we, we just pray God blessing upon you in your retirement. We know that you are a man of God, a strong man of God. And we thank you for your presence this morning. So God bless you all. And we thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Enjoy. Um, we know that we can't greet each other, but to all of our visitors, church family, just look over at our visitors and, and wave at them. Welcome them and say blessings to you. How you doing? And please, hopefully, we will see you again. Um, like I said, we do an old church today. And so um, if Brother Kelvin is not here, after our announcements... Uh, we're going to sing Blessed Assurance. Is that all right? Is that all right? After our announcements, we're going to sing Blessed Assurance. Let me get our announcements today. Uh, we know that this is the first Sunday in the month of July, and it is the custom of Ebenezer Baptist Church that on the first Sunday of every month, we celebrate all of those church family members that either have birthdays in the month of July, or you made it official with your boo, and y'all went to the altar, exchanged rings, and pledged to spend the rest of your lives together. And so if you are having a birthday in the month of July, or if you are having an anniversary in the month of July, we're going to ask that you would stand um, we know that Sister Barbara Clark, she's not here, but today is her birthday. And so y'all see her, wish her a happy birthday. We have all of our church family members here whose birthdays or anniversaries are in the month of July. We pray. Mm -hmm. Anniversaries? Anniversary. You and Deke? Anniversary? And then Deke, you and Deke and us? Right. July must be the blessed month to get hitched. All right. <laughs> and so we pray those that are having birthdays this month that you have a wonderful celebration and that God continues the blessing keep you and for those of you 
who made it official with the love of your life. I pray that every day gets better and better and your love for each other grows stronger and stronger and that the Lord will continue to bless and to keep you and draw you closer and closer to him first and then closer and closer to each other. We don't have an anniversary song, um, but we do have a birthday song. And so let us, church family, sing happy birthday to all of our uh, birthday family members. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, church family. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. All right, choir for the harmony. Y'all better come on here. Amen. Amen. As far as our announcements for the coming week, and, and there are several, um, so I, I pray that you would be patient. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Sister Nanny Childress's son. Um, we did get word that he is home from the hospital after having um, that, his accident. God has blessed and he has heard our prayers. And so um, continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for Sister Susie Powell um, at the loss of her husband, Brother uh, Alan Powell. And in addition, keep the Bozemans in your prayers as well. Um, we did go and we did make visitation there. And... Um, and they send their love to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. On Sunday mornings, uh, church family, our um, reentry committee uh, is here early. So if you would like to kind of go through uh, the protocols, the COVID protocols early, uh, so that there's not a backup at the door, uh, you can do that. You can come early. Um, we are actually here at 9 a.m. for Sunday school, and we know that Dr. Walsh is doing a wonderful job conducting Sunday school and doing the teaching, and so you can come for Sunday school and then just stay for service, and uh, you'll be in, and you won't have to worry about the backlog. Um, we're just having a wonderful time in Bible study. We, are, we have endeavored um, on a new teaching series called God's Playlist, A Journey Through the Psalms. And it has just been a, such a wonderful time of just fellowship and, and gathering and learning as we glean from the examples of uh, the ancient psalmists. And so um, we are still doing Bible study um, on virtually. <clears throat> and so if you look at our social media, uh, you will see the call in number um, there where you can call in. You don't have to be a member of Ebenezer. Uh, we have people calling in from South Carolina. We have people calling in from other states, um, gleaning and, and fellowshipping with us. And so that's one of the benefits and the blessings of uh, this pandemic is that um, the ministry has reached out beyond these four walls, beyond the confines of Inglewood. And uh, there are people in other states that are fellowshipping with us virtually. And so um, you can join us as we venture and journey through the Psalms. Um, the month of August, we will take um, a month's break from Bible study, and so we will continue this series through July. August, we will take a break, and then we are looking to transition to a Zoom platform for Bible study beginning in September so that it will allow us to do some other things and we can see each other and, um, and I can share some things visually with you uh, to make Bible study a little bit easier. And so if you uh, want to be in Bible study but you don't have Zoom yet, you need some assistance, please let us know in the church office so that we can assist you 
in getting on that platform uh, so that you can continue in Bible study with us. Um, I know that this is uh, sort of way ahead of time, but I want to put it on everybody's mind that um, the Ebenezer Community Development Corporation uh, will be having an online auction um, to raise money for our efforts uh, to serve this community. That auction will be uh, the week of Mother's Day uh, 2022. And so we are partnering with the Metro uh, Community Center. We know that they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, Pastor Peter Ahn is no stranger to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Uh, neither is Pastor Sunita Pontan. Um, they are friends of this ministry and they are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we are partnering with them uh, to have this auction to benefit not only our efforts to serve this community, but also their efforts to serve this community as well. And I said this last week, but I don't think I can say it enough, my brothers and sisters, and we want to be an example to this community on how two churches that may look very different can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and do ministry together to serve this community. And so please um, prepare yourselves. Y'all put a little money aside um, and uh, so that you can bid on some of the things uh, that we will be auctioning off. Uh, there will be 83 items, 83 items that will be auctioned off. And I thank God for some of the church family that has volunteered to um, donate some items. And we want to highlight uh, some of our members that either have businesses or um, are artists or um, any, all of those things. If you would like to donate, um, please see one of myself or one of the board members um, so that we can uh, make sure that we chronicle all of the items that we have. And being a part of, of the community, um, there are a certain bits of information that come to me and I try as best that I can to get them to our community because a lot of times uh, there's resources and jobs that, that are available in Bergen County and we're the last to know. And I know that there are some people in our community that could qualify for these jobs and these jobs could be a blessing to them. And so I'm bringing to you four positions. Uh, the Bergen volunteers are looking for uh, people to fill four positions. Some of them are part-time and some of them are full-time. They're looking for a grants manager and that will be a part-time position. Uh, they are looking for a part-time public relations and marketing manager. And so for anyone that has that marketing degree and you're looking for a job, <laughs> Pastor got one right here for you. Um, they're looking for a director of development and that is a full-time position. And then they are looking for a special projects manager and that is a full or part-time position. And so if you are interested in any of these positions, um, they will be in the church office or on the church bulletin board outside. And um, you can then uh, follow up with those. There are also uh, information about affordable uh, housing, um, rental housing for seniors. And if you are 60 and older, and meet the requirements, then there is uh, housing, one bedroom units, um, about 700 square feet, uh, located at 11 East Grand Avenue. There are two vacancies available, and so I have that information for you as well. Also, we have partnered before with the Partnership for Healthy Eating and those who were part of that, um, of our summer um, family gathering. You know that um, you were given healthy food to eat and then uh, we had a workshop where they taught us 
how to eat healthy and how to take care of ourselves. Um, you all know that I'm an advocate of healthy eating, of exercise. Uh, Tyler is up there, and so every week Tyler beats me up um, and getting me in shape to be the strongest, uh, healthiest pastor that I can be uh, so that I can do ministry at a high level of excellence. And so I believe that we need to take care of our physical bodies uh, as well as our spiritual uh, persons um, so that we can do ministry at a high level of excellence. Uh, many of the illnesses that we face in our community are preventable if we learn how to turn down certain foods and just get a little exercise. Amen, somebody. And so we want to continue this partnership with the Partnership for Healthy Eating. Uh, they are initiating a new 12-week program, and it is designed to educate participants on the importance of healthy eating and exercise. The program will allow participants to take control of their health and encourage healthier decisions. Um, they have sent these, I know, to um, many of the pastors in the area, and they are asking um, if two to three participants from each congregation would sign up. Um, week one, they're going to do biometrical screenings. Um, they're going to do an education session on healthy eating, healthy dinner for your family. Week two is education on the, important, or the importance of exercise, followed by 30 minutes of exercise. Don't let that scare you away. Um, week four, you will do a shop right tour um, where they will teach you, don't go down that cookie aisle. Leave them cakes alone. Leave them chips alone. And how to eat healthy. And then uh, week six will be a cooking demonstration. We know that uh, those of you who participated before, um, we know that the food was pretty good. I myself was a little skeptical. Um, at first, but it was seasoned well, hallelujah, and it was healthy. And so we, um, uh, we were blessed from that, and now they are going to give us a, cook, a cooking demonstration. Week eight will be managing stress, emotions, and sick days, and learning not to overeat or emotional eating. Then another cooking demonstration, and then finally they will take another set of biometric screenings so that you can see the progress that you have made, and then they will have a dinner and they will plan for the future. So if you are interested in participating in that project, um, please let us know and we will give you that information as well. Let me make sure I have everything. Um, it is such a blessing and such a joy when one of our church family members is honored. And I want to let the church family member know, members know that we have just a wonderful, wonderful church family member um, that is being honored uh, by the Senate and the General Assembly of the state of New Jersey. She has received uh, several citations, not just for her personally and the work that she is doing personally, but for her foundation and the work that they have been doing tirelessly um, during this pandemic. And that is in the person of Dr. Sharon Bernstein and the Defining Moments Foundation. Many of you know Dr. Bernstein, and she has counseled so many, and she does it behind the scenes quietly, and she has brought resources to this church. Um, she has just been such an, a, a, uh, just an amazing gift to this church, and we know that she cannot be in, um, in person service and worship service because of her um, physical uh, health condition. Uh, however, she is like the Energizer Bunny. She does not stop. She is still, throughout this pandemic, uh, been 
um, counseling and doing workshops and, and helping in the community. And so the state assembly, um, Senator Weinberg, assembly men Johnson and assembly woman uh, Huddle is acknowledging her for all of uh, the wonderful things her and her foundation does. A lot of her um, therapy sessions and all of that, she is doing them pro bono all over this county. <laughs> Even in a time of, of financial stress and, and, and physical illness, she is still giving out of everything that she has. And so we thank God for Dr. Bernstein. Uh, we love her so much and we want the church family to know uh, that the state of New Jersey is honoring her. Amen, somebody. All right. Let me just make sure that I have hit on everything. Um, there is also, for those of you who may uh, have gotten behind during the pandemic on your rent and or utilities, there is assistance um, through Bergen County CARES website. You can go to bergencountycares.org. Um, I would advise you strongly that if you need this assistance, you go on and you apply today. Uh, this state has a, I think, billion dollar surplus, and somebody got to spend that money. Right. <laughs> it might as well be us. Okay. And so if you need assistance, listen. Um, go on that website. If you need help with that, let me know. If you need help with um, applying, let me know. Uh, there are people that, um, that we know and are connected with that would help you. And um, you can get the assistance that you need. And, and don't be scared and don't be shamed because that's our tax money that we paid. And so why not get it back when we need assistance? Okay. Um, lastly, um, you all know that um, I'm very active in the community and, and several different organizations, but one of the most wonderful organizations that I'm active with um, is the best fraternity uh, ever, um, only second to if there's a fraternity in heaven. Uh, it's only second to that one, and that is the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And we are having a fundraiser for our annual scholarship fund where we give scholarships to area um, young people who are graduating from high school. I had the pleasure and the honor of um, presenting one of those scholarships uh, to two young people from my alma mater, Teaneck High School, um, a few years ago, and so we are doing a cookie dough fundraiser um, for uh, the grad chapter, Kappa Theta Lambda, and, and Saints, I gotta confess, I don't know if this is good or bad, I'm just gonna confess it to y'all because y'all family, um, I wanna be the top seller. I do. I don't know where this kind of competitive spirit came up. I'm usually not like this. But for some reason on this, I want to raise $1,000. And so I'm a third of the way there already. I've already raised over $300 to this effort. And so um, I know I just talked a whole lot about healthy eating, but I believe that if y'all pray and get these cookies, and eat them in moderation, kind of spread it out, that it will not affect your blood sugar if you have diabetes. And God is going to keep that A1C down. And so if you're interested in supporting your pastor as we um, fundraise to, to be a blessing to our young people um, in this area, please see me. You can go online and you can order the cookies um, from what I've been told, they come fairly quickly in a tub, and everybody that I've spoken to that made them to, said that they are wonderful. 
they are really good. And so if you would like to support your pastor on that, um, please let me know. And I would appreciate that greatly. And if I win, I'm sure enough going to let y'all know. Amen. All right. Church family, stand with us as we together as a family sing one of the old hymns of the church. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hymn number 27. And then after which, we are going to hear what the Lord has to say to us on this Independence Day. Hymn number 27, Blessed Assurance. And choir, help me. Church family, help me. And we're going to sing this to the glory of God. Salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect submission, all is at rest. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Watching and waiting. Looking above. Looking above. Filled with his goodness. With his goodness and lost in his love. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my soul. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. You may be seated. There is a word from the Lord today. And on this Independence Day, I believe God wants to speak to us in a profound way. And so I ask that you would go with me to the letter to the Galatians. Galatians chapter number five. Galatians chapter number five. And I will be reading simply one verse, that first verse in Galatians chapter number five, verse number one. Galatians chapter number five, verse one. 
When you have it, please signify by standing for the reading of God's word, which is the custom of the house. Galatians chapter number five. Simply that first verse, verse one. Lift your Bibles in the air. And declare with me in this house, this is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I can be who it says I can be. Today I'm going to be taught by the word of God. I humbly confess that my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Galatians chapter number 5, verse 1. In the New King James Version, it simply says this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. The word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. Today, I just want to share briefly with you from the subject, what does freedom look like? What does freedom look like? Let us pray. Blessed Holy God, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you for now this time of hearing from you. Lord God, we pray even now that that you would remove this, your humble servant, and increase in me. That they may not hear my words, but hear yours. That they may not see me, but see you. Hide me behind the cross and speak through me. Speak now, O God, for your servant hears. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. What does freedom look like? This weekend is the celebration, and today is the celebration of Independence Day in this country, a holiday in which we commemorate our freedom from British rule and the beginning of our journey as a sovereign nation. A few weeks ago, we celebrated Juneteenth or Freedom Day. And that is the holiday and now a national holiday that commemorated the news of emancipation reaching the enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation which was supposed to free all of the uh, enslaved Africans was passed two and a half years prior to that. There is a stark lesson that I believe that we can learn from these two events in our nation's history. And that lesson is this, just because freedom is declared does not mean it is realized. Freedom on paper may not translate to freedom in real life. The same holds true for our Christian lives. We know that the word of God says, um, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. But is that freedom really actualized in our lives? Are we truly walking in the freedom that Christ has given us? And if so, what does that freedom look like? I saw a documentary once, probably as I was scanning YouTube, and the documentary was chronicling where uh, they were training baby elephants. And in the training of baby elephants, they would shackle the leg of the baby elephant. 
and would drive a stake in the ground because they were training the baby elephant to stay within a confined area. And they would shackle the elephant with a chain and every time the baby elephant would um, try to move outside of that area, it would feel the pull of that chain on its leg. And this would happen over and over again for several months where the baby elephant would move outside of the parameter or try to move outside of the parameter uh, that they wanted the baby elephant to confine itself. And every time it got to the end of that chain, it would feel that pull. It would feel that restriction. And after several months of this training, uh, the trainers would then remove the chain from the baby elephant's leg. However, the baby elephant was so used to remaining in bondage, it was so used to remaining in a certain parameter spatially, that even though that elephant was now free and did not have any restrictions upon it, it would remain in that restricted area. As the people of God, we have been set free by Christ the Emancipator. But do we remain restricted in familiar prisons of our minds? Do we remain restricted when Christ has truly set us free? Christ has set us free. And my brothers and sisters, I encourage you today, let us walk in that freedom. Paul is addressing a critical conflict in the letter to the Galatians. And that conflict is this, whether to adhere to the law, the Mosaic law, versus salvation uh, and justification through faith and grace in Jesus Christ. There were teachers at the time, and this is what Paul was addressing, there were teachers at the time, possibly Jewish Christian teachers, that were teaching Gentile Christians that Jesus was the Messiah of Israel. Therefore, if they were to receive the blessings of Abraham, if they were uh, to receive being grafted into uh, the blessings and the lineage of Abraham, they must become circumcised, which was an outward expression of the covenant between God and God's people. And then they were to follow the Mosaic law. But Paul had a rebuttal to this type of teaching, and Paul's rebuttal was that justification or being in right standing with God comes by faith in Jesus alone through the grace of God. After a lengthy discourse in the earlier chapters of Galatians, uh, Paul admonishes the Gentile Christians in the region and us as well. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. We have been called, my brothers and sisters, to liberty, freedom in Christ Jesus. We are no longer bound by the law because the law in and of itself was ineffective in justifying us before God. Galatians 2 and 16 says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. If the Gentile Christians had submitted to the teaching um, of the Jewish Christian teachers and submitted themselves to circumcision or the outward expression of that covenant, it would have obligated them to then be adhere in adherence to all of the Mosaic law. And then Christ would not have been profitable for them at all. 
because it is impossible to keep all the law. And failure to adhere to all of it resulted in a curse. Galatians 3 and 10 states, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all of the things, all that is written in the book of the law. The law was there to show us that we couldn't do it on our own and we needed salvation by grace through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 and 3, For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of human flesh to be a sin offering for us. Uh, The first thing that we need to understand as we are journeying through uh, this brief time of teaching on what freedom looks like, we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we are free from the law. We are free from the law. The law was ineffective in that it identified sin for us, but it was powerless to deliver us from it. On the contrary, the law, even in identifying sin for us and showing us, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. No, you ain't supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. In identifying sin for us, it only caused our flesh to crave sin all the more. Let me give you an example. Uh, How many uh, parents are here? Raise your hand. How many parents? Okay, you'll know what I'm talking about here. If you're not a parent, I'm sure you've seen this. All of you, sometime if you're a parent, have told your child when they were little, running around in the kitchen, running around in the house, you've told your child, don't you touch that hot stove. Stay away from that hot stove. You know, you're not supposed to touch that hot stove. The child knows because they have been told that the stove is hot. The child knows because you told them they're not supposed to touch it. The child knows because you've told them that that stove is dangerous. But what is the first thing that child is going to do when you leave the kitchen for a second, they gonna touch that stove. You have told them and shown them what they should not do. But because of the fact that you pointed it out, something in that child says, I wanna check it out anyway. And that child touches that stove And in touching the stove, that child becomes acquainted with consequences for its disobedience. We are all sinners, saved and justified by grace. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. There is no rules, no set of rules or regulations that we can adhere to that will bring us into right relationship with God. There are no good deeds that we can perform that will warrant our salvation and justification. I have said it many, many times, even in our best days, our righteousness, our personal righteousness uh, is as filthy rags. It is useless. It is ineffective. Yet God extended his grace towards us. God demonstrated his own love for us when we didn't need to even deserve it in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died. When we were at our lowest point, Christ died for us. While we were in a state where we were not worthy and we were uh, a deserved of God's judgment, that's when Christ died for us. At our worst, he loved us so much that God gave his best and Christ gave his life. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus 
from the law of sin and death. We are free from the control of our sinful nature. Now, because we are free in Christ, we can live for him and him alone. My second point in us kind of journeying to see what does freedom look like. Okay, we are free from the law. We are free uh, from those rules and regulations that pointed out sin but could not justify us and save us from sin. And we're also free to have a relationship with God. We are free to have a relationship with God. Colossians 1, 22, 21 and 22 says these things. Once you were alienate, alienated from God and we were enemies in our mind because of our evil behavior, but now you have been reconciled by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. When Christ died and the veil of the temple was torn from the top unto the bottom, it was significant in that it, sig it, signi it signified that we have been given access to the presence of God. We don't have to go through a mediator anymore to bring our requests and our prayers to God. We don't have to go to a priest um, on our behalf. We have been given access. We have been reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. We were separated and enemies of God because of our sin. Jesus Christ died. And he brought God and man, humankind, back together and reconciled us so that we can now have access to the God of the universe. We, you and I, my brothers and sisters, can have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. How amazing is that? That we can go to the God that created us and he has adopted us as children of God. That we can have that relationship. That we can go to him and pray and ask questions. That we can go to him and that we can... Uh, present our petitions, our supplications. We can go to him and sometimes we can even go to him and complain about stuff in our lives. We can go and question him. God, why is this happening? I know in the old church growing up, they were like, don't question God. Don't you question God. But as I grew, I learned God ain't intimidated by my questions. God is not going to be stumped if I ask a question. If I'm seeking wisdom, he's going to freely give it to me, according to James. And even in going to God and complaining, God is like, at least you're talking to me. At least we're building a relationship. At least you're putting yourself in a position where I can now answer your questions. Now God might, God might check you, might check us. Like he checked Job. Job, where were you? Let me ask you some questions. Where were you? When I built the foundations of the world, where were you? Sometimes God will check us, put us in our place. But more often than not, God is going to lovingly build that relationship with us. We have a choice, my brothers and sisters. And our choice is that we can have a personal relationship with God. In Christ, we are free to approach God's throne 
of grace with confidence. We don't have to come to God timidly, but we can approach with confidence, not because of what we've done and because we're worthy, but we can approach our God in confidence because of what Christ has done in that he has died and given us access. We are not enemies because of God's grace and salvation. We are now children. We can approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We are free from the law. We're free to have a relationship with God. And lastly, we are free to be our authentic selves. We are free to be our authentic selves. The Bible tells us, beloved, now we are the sons or the children of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now that we are set free from the law of sin and death and are made alive in Jesus Christ, we truly have a choice. Before, when we were living out of our fleshly desires, we didn't really have a choice. Our lives were governed by our sinful flesh. But now that we have crucified that flesh on the cross with Christ and we have been set free, we truly have a choice. And the choice is that we can choose to live in the spirit and by the spirit of God and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, or we can choose to follow um, our fleshly desires and become enslaved again. Daily, we must choose to follow the Spirit of God. Daily, we must surrender to God's will. Daily, we must crucify this flesh. Daily. But now we have the power. God has given us the power to do that. And we can make that choice. But now that we have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. When we commit ourselves to God, the benefits is holiness and the result is eternal life. Paul admonishes several times in the scripture that the people of God should walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The truth of the matter is, sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we choose to live a life that is carnal and worldly. The letter of 1 Corinthians deals with this because they had the same issue. They had accepted Jesus Christ and had received his grace, but they had chosen to live the carnality that was surrounding them. But Christ has given us a choice. And Paul addresses this with these words. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty, called to freedom. Only do not use liberty, do not use freedom that Christ has given as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. We have been given the power to become the children of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, 
even to those who believe in his name. We have been freed from the bondage of our sinful nature. Through Christ's sacrifice, we have access to God's kingdom and the presence of God. We have access to the one that knew us before the foundation of the world. We have access to the one that knows the plans that he has for us and orders our steps each day. We are the children of God. And as the children of God, let us walk in our authentic selves as the children of God. There is a freedom in knowing that he has already planned out our lives. There is a freedom in knowing that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. There is a freedom in knowing that God has given us his peace and his peace he has left with us even in a chaotic world. We, my brothers and sisters, have been set free We've been set free by Jesus Christ. Beloved, let us show the world what true freedom looks like. Let us pray. Blessed God, we thank you for your word, the freedom that you have given us, not because we deserved it. We certainly couldn't earn it, but it was because of your love for us your grace extended to us, the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Now, O oh God, we pray that we will walk in that freedom each and every day. Now that you've given us a choice as your children, we're free from the law, we're free to have a relationship with you, and, oh, God, we're free to be our authentic selves. And so, God, let us walk in that freedom, being disciples and witnesses to those who don't know you. And, oh, God, even as we walk in that freedom here, we don't even have a clue as to what we shall be. It hasn't even been revealed. The culmination of us walking in our authentic selves won't be revealed until we see you. Because you have declared by your word that when you come, we will see you because we'll be like you. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God to truly be free and stay free. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen and amen. He wants to set you free from the tyranny, from the bondage of sinful nature. It's nothing that we could do that can earn that freedom care how good we are, how many good deeds we do, how much charity we do, it's not enough to pay the price of redemption from sin. But there is one that was able to pay that price, and that was Jesus Christ. And because he paid that price by his death on the cross and his resurrection, he has given us access to salvation. And so my first appeal is this. If there's someone here that has not accepted Jesus Christ, if you've never asked him to come into your life, today is your day. Today is your independence day where you can be free from sin today that's you and the spirit of God is troubling your spirit you come down to this altar and we will lead you through the sinner's prayer and you can be saved today 
Does it mean that you're going to go home and everything is going to be perfect in your life? No. Does it mean that you're going to go home and those things you know that you shouldn't be doing, you're just going to not want to do them anymore? Maybe not. But it does mean that you're going to have a choice and that you're going to have the power to be the children of God, to be the son, the daughter of God that he has destined for you to be. That's my first appeal. My second appeal is this. If you've already accepted Jesus Christ, but you don't have a church home, a stable place where you are consistently a part of that fellowship, where you are growing and learning, where you are being taught and fed, where you have a family that is surrounding you, that is going to help you, that you're connected in, not that you drop in, drop out, maybe there, maybe not, but that you're consistent, a part of a fellowship. We offer Ebenezer Baptist Church to you today. We're not a perfect church, and, and you know I always say that. We're not a perfect church. We're a church that's growing, we're a church that loves God, and we're a church that's trying to do the best to be disciples in this community. And so if you feel the Spirit of God drawing you to this place, our doors are open to you. and You can connect here with Ebenezer Baptist Church, and we will do all that we can to try to help you be the disciple that God has called you to. So my first appeal is for salvation. If you're not saved, you don't have to go home and get it right. God will get it right for you. He just wants you to come. My second appeal, if you do not have a church home, a consistent place where you are connected in to the ministry, God had never intended for us to go through this Christian journey in isolation. But he has connected us and brought us together in the body because we need each other. And so if that's you and you are not connected, you can join Ebenezer Baptist Church. And we will love on you and we will help you to be all that you are destined to be in Christ. Is there one? And so as we are all standing, and on the screens you will see the covenant. As we're all standing, let us read it together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, We do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church. Give it a second. And knowledge and holiness to give it a place in our affections, prayers and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute carefully and regularly. As God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God. Give it a second. 
to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, give it a second, to secure it without delay, and through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we will engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Help me sing this, church family. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh lord have mercy on me sing it one more time let us break let us pray Bible tells us that the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples and they were celebrating the Passover, they were celebrating, and commemorating God's miraculous deliverance of his people out of Egypt. And as they were there eating and fellowshipping, Jesus took the opportunity to give them an object lesson. The Bible tells us that Jesus took the bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. After which Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink of the fruit of the vine for this is my blood which shall be shed for many. Who is invited to participate in the Lord's Supper? If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you are invited to partake of the Lord's Supper, but we don't want to come partaking unworthy. We don't want to come and drink the cup that represents his blood that was shed and eat the bread that represents his broken body harboring sin and unforgiveness and any unrighteousness in our hearts and so we're going to ask reverend fogel now if she would pray a prayer of consecration that as she is praying 
you will pray as well that God would clean us up and forgive us and that he will clothe us in his righteousness so that we can be worthy to come to the table. Reverend Fogel. Let us pray. Merciful and mighty God, we just thank you this morning, Father God, for this, your sacrament, Father God. Your word declares in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just enough to forgive us for our sins and to save us from all righteousness, Father God. Your word declares that he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So right now, God, we consecrate our bodies and ourselves to you. We consecrate this sacrament to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, search us and know us, Father God. See if there be any wicked way in us, Father God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father God. For we do this unto you, Father God. You said as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death till he comes, Father God. So Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, we consecrate, we dedicate this to you, this sacrament, this holy sacrament, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, we pray and we thank you for searching us and Father God, seeing us with right standing with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, please prepare the elements. Does everyone, has everyone received their elements? Is there anyone that has not? Okay. Jesus said, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Jesus said, this is my blood, which shall be shed for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. There is no record of a benediction, but the word of the, God, of the Lord says, after they had sung and him, they departed out into the Mount of Olives to pray. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, we died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, the glory. 